Okay, so here's what I'm going to do with this video. And I don't know if it will be one or two videos, but we'll see how long it goes. Um, I'm going to do the review guide um, that I gave you for the polynomial test. And I'm going to go over every single question on there and my thinking and my logic behind it. You do have the answer key, and that is posted on the actual Canvas date along with this video. Um, what I would do to kind of study for this like thing or actually use this video so that's helpful is I would try to go through the problems with me. I'm going to have different pauses and different things for you to reflect on. And during those times, I would try to work out the problem on your own. If you get it right, skip ahead. If you don't get it right or you don't understand, watch how I do the problem and see if that helps you. If you get stuck with any of this, please send me an email and I will respond as quickly as I can. Okay, so we're going to get started with this and hopefully this goes pretty well. The first thing that I notice in this first question is they want me to list the zeros of this polynomial. Um, and so when you think about this, we want this thing to equal zero or each individual piece to equal zero. Well, that's really easy. If x equals zero, then x is zero. If this piece equals zero, we'd have x plus two equals zero, which means x is negative two. For this last one, we would have that x minus one is equal to zero, which means that x is equal to one. So we went through and we just listed out all the zeros. The next question on it was what degree is this? Well, I know that this is a third degree. And the reason I know that is you can count up how many x's you have. You have one, two, three x's. If they put something like a square on it, then that increases your x's, like one, two, three, four. So, but this one, because we only have three x's, we know that this is a third degree. The very last thing they want us to do is write this thing in standard form. So I have to go through and try to write this in standard form. What it means to write this in standard form is it means that we want to multiply out all the factors so that we can get one nice answer. So we're going to multiply out all these factors. The first thing I'm going to do is distribute, and I'm going to get x squared plus 2x. And then we're going to multiply these things. When we multiply these things, what's going to happen is this x squared whoops, is going to distribute. And I'm going to get x cubed minus x squared. And this will distribute. And I'm going to get plus 2x squared minus 2x. And then, because these are both x squared, we can combine them. And we can get a final answer of x cubed plus x squared minus 2x. And this would be in standard form. The last question asks you what kind of uh, polynomial this is. Um, it's a cubic trinomial because it's a third degree, which means it's cubic. And we call it a trinomial because it has three terms or trinomial. I don't, I'm not as worried if you uh, like memorize these names. Um, um, they won't be reflected on the test, but it's just a good thing to kind of um, know what some of these things are called. Okay, let's try the next problem. Okay, so question two wants us to use synthetic division to solve this. Now, you should have watched the video on how to use synthetic division yesterday and work through the problems. So we should remember from yesterday that when we do synthetic division, we really only need worry about the numbers. And the other thing is we need to think about what that answer is. Well, that answer would be negative 3 because if that's the factor, we want to make it equal to 0. And what would make it equal to 0 is plugging negative 3 into there. And then again, we don't care about our x's or x squareds or any of that. We're just going to write down the numbers that we got, which our numbers are 3, negative 3, negative 4, and positive 3. Now, I always like to help myself remember, cut that last one off, because that's where the remainder is going to live on the bottom of our problem. The first number is always dropped down, so that's a 3. Then we always take this and multiply it by this number here, which will give me a negative 9. 
we then just add down, so I get negative 12. I do that multiplication process again, so they give me positive 36. Um, I again add straight down, giving me positive 32. And then we multiply again, which gives us negative 96. Um, and then add straight down, which gives us uh, a big number, negative 93. Let me make that 9 a little bit better. Well, now that I have that, we just rewrite it. And again, because you're dividing, this goes down 1 degree from our starting one. So this is 3x squared minus 12x plus 32 with a remainder of negative 93. And that would be our final answer. Okay, let's try the next problem. They want us to write this in standard form. So um, the first thing that we want to do is anytime they want us to write a polynomial, I start by writing it in factored form. And the factors of this would be x minus 5 and x plus 4. And we don't have any more factors than this because we have no square roots. And so we'll see later what square roots do, but for right now we don't have any more factors. So this is it. Now that I have this, to get into standard form, what we'd need to do is multiply it out, just like before. So we're going to multiply this out. I'm going to get x squared plus 4x minus 5x minus 20. My middle two terms will combine, and we will get our final answer to be x squared minus 1x minus 20. And that would then be in standard form. Again, for standard form, you want to put this thing in factored form, and then after getting it in factored form, you can kind of multiply it through. Let's try the next one. Let's say we have this problem right here. And when I see this problem right here, what's going through my brain is they want me to factor this. Now, I have no clue how to factor this polynomial. Like That's just not going to happen. I do know how to factor things that are smaller, though. So we want to make this into a smaller degree. So it's a cubic right now, and we want to get it to a quadratic. To get it to a quadratic, because they told me a factor, I know that I want to divide this. And because there's no number in front of your x, synthetic division just works a little bit nicer. So if my factor is x minus 4, again, in the synthetic division, we put in a positive 4, because it's always what makes this 0. And then again, for synthetic division, I just want the numbers that are in the front. So that would be 1, negative 5, 2, and 8. And I put a line down to remember that this is my remainder. But if this is a factor, our remainder hopefully is 0. We'll double check and see at the end. Um, we always carry this down, so that's a 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Minus, well, we're adding these together. So negative 5 plus 4 is 1, or negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And 8 plus negative 8 is 0. So this is a factor. We were correct. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to rewrite this. So this would rewrite as x squared minus 1x minus 2. There's one of our factors in front. This is the other thing. Well, I know how to factor x squareds now. That's really, really easy. We just think about what's going to multiply together to give me negative 2 and add together to give me negative 1. That's going to be x minus 2 and x plus 1. And then again, the factor that they told us. This would be my final answer for number 4. Let's try the next one. Okay, so for this one, we're supposed to decide if x plus 1 is a factor. Now, if you're trying to decide if x plus 1 is a factor, what you could do is you could use synthetic division on this and see if it divides nicely. Now, that's one way. But another name for a factor is an x-intercept. And what we should know about x-intercepts is that the y value equals 0. So essentially what I'm saying is, if I plug in this x value, this thing should equal 0. So the faster way would be to plug in that x value. 
So that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to plug in that x value, which again, the x value would be negative 1, because negative 1 plus 1 makes 0. Um, so this is the way we're going to go about it. And again, I plugged it in because we should get 0. Let's see if we get 0. Well, uh, 1 to the negative third is negative 1. Uh, that's going to be negative 4 because you'll have 1 squared, which is 1, times negative 4 is negative 4, minus 1, minus 6. Well, there's no way that when I add all this up that that equals 0. Like, that's just not going to happen. So, this is not a factor. Again, the other way is you could use synthetic division on this. Let's use that method. So we'd have negative 1, and then we would have 1, minus 4, 1, negative 6. And when we use synthetic division on this, again, we should get a remainder of 0. Let's see if that happens, um, which we should expect it not to happen. And if you look at this, we do get a remainder of 0. Oh. Um, we actually don't get a remainder of 0. I'm just bad with math because negative 1 times 6 gives you negative 6, and negative 6 plus negative 6 definitely gives us negative 12. So we can actually see that we don't get a remainder of 0. Um, good thing I started with the, the, the remainder method. So when you're doing this problem and when you're thinking about this, um, there's two ways to check. You can either use synthetic division, which I think is a little bit tougher, and you can see why you can make mistakes on it, or you can just plug it in and see if it equals zero, which I think is a little bit easier. Let's try problem six. For this, they first want the number of solutions. This is five solutions, because it's a fifth degree. And they want to know the real and imaginary solutions. Well... Imaginary solutions, if you remember, can only come in pairs. So they can go 0, 2, and 4. They can't get to 6 because there's only 5 solutions. So the real ones would then have to be 5 if it was 0, 3 if it was 2, and then 1 if it was 4. Because again, in all situations, we have to have 5 solutions. You can think about this graphically and see how this makes sense. A fifth degree, if we remember, would have one, two, three, four U shapes. So think about it. It could cross five times like that. It could cross once and stay above. Well, that would be one real solution and four imaginary solutions up here. It could cross three times. And that's really, oh, yeah, and that's really all of its options. Because if you try to make it cross no times, like this, it really does cross, because that arrow keeps going. So again, for these problems, you have to make sure your imaginary solutions come in pairs, and you have as many solutions as you have degrees. This is the first page, so I'm going to finish off this first video just right here. And then we'll start the next video for page number two.